and actually if you use juice it's better so um, the key to the tablet training mainly is the bottle um, and it's because of the mechanism of swallowing the water and sucking on the bottle that actually takes the tablet down between us that's the easiest way of doing it so should we use it to cover there rather than have you got plenty oh you've put your stickers on fantastic i think you need one more sticker do you think what do you think One for me. Thank you. You ready? Okay, right. Lips around the bottle and three big drinks. Right round, no, right round. Put the bottle, put your lips down to the bottom. That's it. Now tip the bottle up and do three drinks from the bottle. One, two, three. Has it gone? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there they go. Oh. And three. Remember three. One. Is it good? <laughs> that is very good. <gasps> so same again. Pop it on your tongue in the same place. Pop it on your tongue in the same place. I think it is. Pop it on. That's okay though. And three drinks. Ready? Okay. <laughs> Still there. Try putting it in the middle again and try three drinks. Whoops. Slippy. Ready? And three drinks. Ready? Okay. Okay, so I've lined up the tablets here just so you can see. We've used a gradually increasing size of tablet to teach me to take tablets. Um, they are subtly all slightly bigger than the other, um, but the child usually has no concept that you've given slightly increasing tablets each time. Um, and these are some real tablets lined up beside it so you can see the comparison between. So the last tablet that B successfully took with the bottle was the largest tablet. And as you can see, compared to a paracetamol, um, it's much bigger. So as long as the tablet, the dummy tablet that you take is bigger than the tablet you're aiming to get the child to take, you should take the tablet no problem at all. Okay, so it's really important to know that this works with teenagers equally as well as it works with young children. Sometimes teenagers and adults have developed an aversion to tablets and they think that they can't swallow tablets. Use exactly the same technique. Um, and we've just done this with Susie, so she's gonna demonstrate taking a tablet for us. Okay, so Susie, if you just take that tablet for me and then swallow that down. How was that? Fine. Better than horrible taste of medicine? Much better. Hello, my name is Emma Lim and I'm a paediatric ID consultant and I'm part of our fantastic Kids Med project along with Elsa, one of our nurses, Susan and Nicola from pharmacy and Jensen who is another consultant. And I guess you might think, where do good projects start from? Good projects start from good ideas. So Elsa and I have been teaching children with HIV how to swallow pills since the 90s, but we've not really shared that. And this Kids Med project was born when we met Jensen and Nicola in a corridor. And you might wonder, what is so bad about suspensions or syrups? They taste bad, they're full of sugar, they cause tooth decay, they have short expiry dates, they're bulky, they need to be kept in a fridge, they're not easily available from local pharmacies and travelling with liquids is a problem. And that's just what parents told us. In fact, staff told us they had a load of concerns. Liquids are mostly unlicensed. Some GPs don't feel safe prescribing them. Dosing is tricky. They can be less accurate. They're very expensive. And there are safety concerns because you, they come in different concentrations. And I think it's hard to remember how expensive they are. So, for example, tacrolimus suspension is 13 times more expensive than tablets, but soluble prednisolone that we use every day is 30 times more expensive than the tablet. And one bottle of nitrofurantoin is 485 pounds, 160 times more expensive than the tablets. So, this is how our Kids Med project was born. And our aim was simple. We want all children in our region, from Newcastle to Cumbria to Middlesbrough, to get the right medicine at the right dose at the right time with minimum fuss wherever they live. 
And one of these things that we could do to help was to teach them to swallow pills. So we had a plan. We had a team with nurses, doctors, pharmacists. We even had a grant from the AHSN, Academic Health Science Network. So where do you start? We sat down, we planned, we made a list of everything we needed, equipment, staff, sweets, training resources, more sweets, and that conversation became this driver diagram. And here's what we had to do. We had to make up a pill swallowing kit. We needed boxes, sports cap bottles, dummy capsules, small sweets, medium sweets, and lots of rewards and stickers and certificates. And first of all, we started small. So our first training session was on the renal unit, and we chose them because they have quite a small number of patients, but these are patients who take a large number of drugs over long periods of time. And our aim was to convert all children eligible, so over five with no swallowing problems, to take pills instead of suspensions. And remember, quality improvement is nothing without data because you can't be sure what's happening if you haven't measured it. So three months into our project, we looked at what had happened. We'd converted 21 children to swallowing pills. The youngest was five, and we had already saved £40,000 a year recurring costs. And I said to Jensen, that's amazing. How did you do it? And he looked a bit sheepish, and he said, well, half of them, we just asked them, can you swallow a pill? And they said yes. So our first cycle of improvement was just to improve our habits and ask children, can you swallow a pill? And if they can, prescribe accordingly. Our next cycle of refinement was realising that our training resources needed to be online, free, open access. So that was a job for our social media guru, Jensen, and our artwork team. And as we grew, as the project grew, people came to us. So the clinical trials unit had a new trial for Duchenne's muscular dystrophy in children. But one of the inclusion criteria was to swallow a pill. And this is the only trial for children. So their only way in was to learn to swallow pills. It was a perfect opportunity. So we trained the whole unit up and all children have been successful in pill swallowing. And you might ask us, why do you think our project has been successful? It might be because our team is short, I mean small but perfectly formed, but that makes us nimble and it makes us flexible and it means we can get things done quickly. And secondly, I think we had a really clear vision, as Nicola put it to us. It's so obvious, I can't believe we haven't done this before. And it's fun and we get to eat sweets. And we're here today to talk to you about our success and celebrate all our really hard work, like how we got our paper published in the BMJ, and how we engaged our whole team and mobilised our resources and changed the culture in the hospital. You can swallow pills and you can teach other people how to do it. So, the question is, what will we do next? One of our teaching fellows, Ravi Mistri, he came on board and he developed an e-learning package. So we had the resources to be able to teach people outside our hospital. And first of all, we went to the nursing schools and medical schools and developed an interactive teaching module, which was hugely successful because who doesn't want to swallow sweets? And next, we will be going to the School of Pharmacy. And where do we go next? How do we spread? All of us have presented at paediatric, pharmacy, nursing, regional and national conferences. In fact, I just want to say we should have been the keynote presentation at the RCPCH annual conference in April, but we're all a bit busy with COVID. However, we're really proud that we've upskilled our outpatient nurses, our pharmacy technicians and our play specialists at this really important time because many of the medications for COVID only come in tablet form. And what does success look like to us? It's actually really broad. Yes, we won things, but Becky Stevenson from Teesside University, who was a graphic arts student, she got her first paid commission from us. Louis Francis, who made our film work from the documentary film school in Newcastle, he's a PhD student, he got his grant from us. Nicola did her first winning presentation at a regional pharmacy conference. And we won first prize at the Bright 
Ideas Awards for Health in 2019 and we were delighted to be the 2020 winner of the clinical category of NHS Sustainability Awards. So, what next next? We're really delighted. Last week we've just found out that we've got a £20,000 grant from the Royal College of Paediatrics to develop a national e-learning package and make a series of podcasts alongside Medisense, who's a free online access medical education Geordie group who work with us. And this is alongside Health Education England. So we are at the point of scaling up now to looking not just regionally, but how we will um, not just regionally, but to seeing how we will do things nationally. And finally, I want to go back to our message. Our message is a really simple message. You wouldn't send somebody home with an inhaler without explaining how to use it. So why not teach patients how to swallow pills? Remember, success is about making life easier for our patients. It's about saving a bit more plastic. It might even be about saving money. But it's also about empowering our team and the individuals in it and taking every opportunity you've got. We couldn't see at the beginning of this project how it would turn out, but that's the heart of quality improvement, seeing where your journey will take you. Thank you. Hello there, my name is Nicola Vesey and I'm a paediatric pharmacist at the Great North Children's Hospital and I've been working on the Kids Meds project with Emma, um, Incent, Ailsa and Susan. I just wanted to round off by giving you some of my thoughts uh, from the project. So what I wanted to start with was some of my unforeseen learning outcomes that I've had from this. So my first one was, don't underestimate the power of a corridor conversation. We work in an NHS full of brilliant minds, talk to your colleagues, listen to your colleagues and ask your colleagues things. And the second thing was to don't be afraid of being challenged. When I was first asked whether or not I knew how to teach children how to swallow tablets, I was quite ashamed to say that I didn't, um, but I was very um, enthusiastic to be told how to do that. And I think that that's been true of everybody that's embraced the project with us. The other thing is that I've had quite a lot of people who've got in touch with me and asked what is it that has made the project successful and particularly the pharmacists in the country have got in touch to ask how have we made the project work and I think that to me there's two reasons as to why it's worked so well. The first thing is that we've had a brilliant driving force behind the project so Emma, Yincent and Ailsa have all been really motivational, really enthusiastic and very flexible to helping out other teams and other people when they've asked for help. But the second thing is that this isn't just a pharmacy project. Yes, it involves lots of medicines, but this doesn't need to just be led by pharmacy. We've got nurse specialists, we've got ward nurses, outpatient nurses, play specialists, medics, and pharmacists and pharmacy technicians who all know how to train children. And I think that this really embodies the multidisciplinary approach that we have at Great North Children's Hospital. And I'd finally just leave, like to leave you with this lasting thought. As healthcare professionals, we meet families of children with medical conditions on a, a regular, frequent basis, and it's always a privilege to be involved in their care. At every consultation, think of it as an opportunity to do something that is gonna positively impact on their life. And don't overlook the power of being able to get families to teach their children how to take tablets and the long-term impact that this will be able to have on their families. Thank you for watching.